Number one and two are going to require that you have technology that can create the different graphs that we've been working with. So in this number one specifically, we're going to be working on creating a histogram. I'm going to use the GeoGebra site so to do this. So you can go to GeoGebra.org if you don't have a different way to do this. And so GeoGebra.org will pop up a screen that looks like this. So in the upper right hand corner, you can click this triangle and circle button and then the three dots and then go down to spreadsheet. So this will allow you to type in data. So then you'll just want to type in each of your data points here. And I have these just saved, so I'm just going to paste them in, but you would just type them in each one. Then once you have your data typed in, then you're going to go to this upper left hand side and you're going to click on this second button here that looks like a histogram. And then you're going to click on one variable analysis. Now, when you click this, you might get a plot or you might not. And so let's see, I don't think I had my data. So make sure you click your data. So have your whole row highlighted there. Then you can click that. Then it'll give you a graph. And um, so you can click on this button and it'll give you different options. So currently I have a bar chart. What this question asked for was a histogram. And then the question asked for specific intervals on your histogram as well. So the way that you can change intervals here is by clicking on this little settings button and then set classes manually. So click on this. Then at the top here, it, it asks, you know, for a start part and then a width. So I'm gonna change my width to one and then hit enter. And then you can see at the bottom that you have your, your widths are zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five. And so then there's our histogram. And so if we go back, let me get a screenshot of this. So then um, we can go back to our question here. And it asked us to describe the shape. And so if we look at this shape here, if you kind of think of drawing like a curve with it, it's off to one side. So this kind of slopes over here to the left. So that would mean that this is a skewed distribution. So skewed to the left side. And then your center here, if we had like 21 um, values that we typed in. And so there's one here, plus three is four, plus six is 10. So it's gonna be somewhere in one of these two intervals. So right around three. So the center is around three, if you wanna try and describe the center with that. So then number two, again, we're gonna type in these 20 data entry points into GeoGebra. So just go back to your GeoGebra screen, and then you can move this over to reveal your spreadsheet again. So do that and get the values typed in. Again, I have mine saved here, so I'm just gonna paste them in. Then highlight that column and hit this var one variable analysis again. And then it'll switch your analysis to the new data. And again, this one is now a histogram. This question asked us to do a dot plot. So you can just click here and select dot plot. And then it also asked us to do a box plot. So I am going to um, just get a screenshot here and put this over in my other document because we're gonna need to analyze this. So I'm gonna put it, whoops. Just gonna get this in here make it a little bit smaller and then we can get the um, box plot. But it's nice because then once you have your data entered, you can just um, switch right here to the next plot. And so it's an easy, quick way to look at the data in different ways without having to do it all by hand.
So the initial entry of the data might take a little bit of time, but then once you have it in, then it's really nice. So it asks us to um, look at the shape here. And so this shape, again, if we think about like drawing a um, curve on it, so let me just do that. So if we draw a curve here, right, it goes down and it's longer on this side. So then that means we've got a skewed distribution or a skewed shape. So skewed to the right this time. And then our center looks like it's around with a center at 135. So it's a little bit harder to mate. I mean, you do kind of see it in this one, but we'd have to actually count for the median. But in the box plot, we see the median here and you can see that it's at 135. So then describing the center is a little bit easier maybe with the box plot. So then part C asks us to compare the information that is displayed on both of the on each of our displays. Um, so for the dot plot, we can see um, all the individual values, like the specific numbers of them. So you can see that stuff. Um, and we can easily, in my opinion, maybe yours is different, but we can more easily see the shape of the distribution. Oops. In that um, dot plot, so easier to see the, the distribution or the shape of the distribution. Um, and then in the box plot, we can easily see the median and the quartiles. So that's very much more easy to see. Um, and then, so if you needed to get describing the center like we just talked about, and then in both, it's um, fairly easy to see the min and max values. Um, but so depending on what you're doing, different graphs are, are nice to use. So looking at the different ones, and then that technology just helps you quickly um, flip between each of them. All right, then number three says to describe the shape of this. Again, it's going up and then back down, but longer over here. So not symmetric, but skewed to the right. And then a center, maybe somewhere between like six and nine. And we could, you know, count up the data points, which it does ask us to do in part B so that we could figure out where the median is and make sure we're describing that center better. But so three, there's three data points here, plus five is eight, plus seven is 15, two here to get us to 17, and then 18, 19, 20. So we have 20 values in this. And then write a statistical question that could have produced this data set. So remember when you're talking statistical question that you need to have room for variability. So it can't be a very exact question like how much does this weigh or how much did it did you do yesterday? How many like an exact answer? So you want to have something in your question like the word usually or typical. So how what is the typical weight of and then some animal? All right, then number four says the dot plot represents the distribution of satisfaction ratings for a landscaping company on a scale of one to 10. On average, what's the satisfaction rating? So there's kind of two different ways that you could do this. You could look at the mean or you could look at the median. So for the mean, you're gonna wanna add up what all of these dots represent. So one plus five plus five plus five plus five and so on. And so that total is 180. And then there are 25 different dots there. So 25 different values, that would give us a mean of 7.2. For the median, we have 25. So we want to find the 13th value um, would be our median because that would be right in the middle. So if you just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is going to be in, um, is going to be 8. So your median is eight, 
your mean is 7.2, and those are two indicators of the average satisfaction rating.